Welcome to another math session here in Soviet with Sir June. Today we are going to discuss about right triangle trigonometry or solving right triangles using trigonometry. So when we talk about right triangle trigonometry, we are solving for the unknown sides or angles of a right triangle using, of course, the trigonometric ratios. So we need to take note of the following. The first one, when we are solving, we need to label and relate the sides depending on the acute angle given or you are finding with respect to the right triangle. The second one, when we are solving for the angle, get the inverse of the trigonometric function being used. Like for example, sine ang ating gamit doon sa ating problem. So therefore, we need to get the inverse of that which is arc sine or sine raised to negative 1. Kapag ka cosine, ang inverse will be cosine raised to negative 1 or arc cosine. Kapag tangent naman, we have tangent raised to negative 1 or arc tangent. So let us proceed. So, the first thing that you should do is, of course, to make sure that your scientific calculator is in degree mode. So, kailangan meron ka dyang deg na nakita or D sa taas ng iyong scientific calculator for you to say that your cal calculator is in degree mode. If not, of course, press mode, then choose deg. Okay? So, try getting the value of sine 45 degrees. So, kapag ka naka-degree ang iyong scientific calculator, you should have obtained the answer 0 0.707106, etc. So, kapag ka ganito ang value na nakuha mo, therefore, parehas ng naka-degree ang ating calculators. So, let us proceed with problem number 1. So, when we are solving, kailangan yung dalawa. So, ia-apply natin yun when we are solving the following problems na may-encounter natin for today. So, solve for the measures of angle B, segment BC, and segment AC of the given right triangle ABC. If you can see, we have angle A that measures 32 degrees and BA measures 15 centimeters. We cannot use Pythagorean theorem since isang side pa lang ang given. So, ang pinakamadaling gawin dito, the easiest way is for us to get the value of angle B. So, papaano kuwain ang measure ni angle B? Take note that when we add the interior angles of a triangle, the sum must be 180 degrees. So therefore, we have measure of angle A plus measure of angle B plus measure of angle C is equal to 180. Then let us substitute. So angle A is 32, angle B is missing, angle C is 90 is equal to 180. So when we combine similar terms, 32 plus 90, that will be 122, is equal to 180. Then let us transpose or apply the addition property of equality. Then eventually, we will get the measure of angle B, which is 58 degrees. So there is a shortcut here. Since we have given a right triangle, so therefore, A and B must be complementary. Kapag kainan ko dapat si A at saka si B, the sum must be 90 degrees. So, paano mas madaling makukuha si angle B? We just need to subtract the given acute angle, 32 degrees, from 90. So, 90 minus 32, the answer will be 58 degrees. And that will be the measure of angle B. So, we are now through with getting the value of angle B or the measure of angle B. So, hindi natin ito papakailaman. Ang papakailaman lang natin or the things that we are going to deal with are the given, of course. We have 32 degrees and 15 centimeters. So, next, let us find the length of BC. So, this is BC. Let us represent it as X. So, remember the trigonometric ratio or the angle of depression and angle of elevation that we had? So, we should remember that the reference angle that we are given in this problem is 32 degrees. So, therefore, ilabel natin yung X, side BC, and the given side which is A. So, with respect to 32 degrees, of course. So, X is the opposite side of 32 degrees. So, 32 degrees opposite niya si X. How about 15 centimeters or segment BA or side BA? That is the hypotenuse. So, what trigonometric ratio are we going to use in order for us to relate the opposite side and the hypotenuse? Remember, so katoa, we will use sine. We have sine theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now, let us... Um, substitute the given. So, theta here, the given acute angle is 32 degrees. So, upon substitution, that will be sine 32 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is x, and then the hypotenuse, which is 15 centimeters. 
Let us now multiply both sides of the equation by 15 centimeters in order for us to eliminate the fraction. So therefore, makakancel na yan. So all we have will be 15 centimeters times sine 32 degrees is equal to x. Or you can simply cross multiply. Remember that sine 32 degrees has a denominator of 1. So upon cross multiplication, parehas pa rin ang ating equation na makukuha. So if you are going to encode 15 centimeters times sine 32 degrees in your scientific calculator, the approximate value is this. 7.948789 etc etc so non terminating itong value na to so if we are going to round off our answer to the nearest hundreds or nearest two decimal places the result will be 7 and 9500 centimeters so therefore we have the length of x or side bc which is 7.95 centimeters next let us find the length of ac so you can use the Pythagorean theorem here since we already have the length of the hypotenuse and the length of one leg. But we will stick with using the trigonometric ratio. So let us rename AC as Y and we should remember that the reference angle is 32 degrees. So with respect to the reference angle 32 degrees, Y or side Y side AC is the adjacent side. And 15 centimeters here, one of the given is the hypotenuse. So relating the hypotenuse and the adjacent side, so katawa, we will be using cosine, okay? Cosine theta is equal to the length of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So upon substitution, that will just be cosine 32 degrees is equal to y over 15 centimeters. So again, you can cross multiply or you can multiply both sides of the equation by 15 centimeters. We can cancel. So we will eventually get the equation 15 centimeters times cosine 32 degrees is equal to 1. So upon encoding it in your uh, scientific calculator, you will get y is approximately 12.720721, etc, etc. Or if we are going to round it to the nearest hundreds, the result will be y is equal to 12 and 7200 centimeters. So, nakuha na natin yung mga sides and angles ng ating given right triangle. So, just remember na meron tayong right triangle trigonometry in order for us to solve for the missing sides and missing angles of a right triangle. So, let us continue and have another example. So, in this example or in this item, we are given with this right triangle. And if you can see, we are given with the length of the hypotenuse and one of the legs. And we are asked to solve for the measures of EC, angle A, and angle B. So, unang pinakamadaling gawin dito is to find the measure of segment EC. Since we have two sides of a right triangle that are given, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So, again, the Pythagorean theorem states that the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So, upon substitution, we now have BC squared plus 7 squared is equal to 8 squared. So, upon squaring all the terms, we now have BC squared plus 49 is equal to 64. Then, let us transpose 49. And simplify it, we have BC squared is equal to 15. To get the value of BC, we need to extract the square roots of both sides of the equation. Then, we only need to consider the positive square root of 15. So, therefore, BC is equal to square root of 15 centimeters. So, we are now done getting the value or the length of BC. So, hayaan mo na natin yung length to BC or segment BC dyan and we will focus on the given sides or the given side lengths of our right triangle in finding the angles A and B. So, let us find angle A. So, angle A is our reference angle. With respect to our reference angle, segment CA or the side with the length of 7 cm is our adjacent side. And the other one with respect to angle A, BA, with the length of 8 cm is our hypotenuse. So therefore, in order for us to get the value of angle A or the measure of angle A relating the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, we will be using cosine ratio. So upon substitution, cosine A, remember that our angle is A, is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So upon substitution, we have cosine A is equal to 7 over 8. So we will be canceling centimeters or the unit. Then, 
Since we are looking for the angle or solving for the angle, we need to multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse of the given trigonometric function. So the given trigonometric function is cosine, so therefore, I multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse of that, and that is cosine raised to negative 1 or r cosine. Then we can cancel, ang matitira na lang will be the angle A. So angle A is equal to r cosine of 7 over 8. So how are you going to encode this in your calculator? So press shift or second, second function, then cosine. Open parentheses, 7 divided by 8, close parentheses. So therefore, the approximate value of the angle A is 28.955 degrees. And if you are going to round it off to the nearest whole number, angle A measures 29 degrees. So ayan, nakuha natin yung first angle. So therefore, kaya-kaya natin kuhain si angle B, patulad kanina, nang ginawa natin. So paano gagawin? Just get the complement of 29 degrees. Or just simply subtract 29 degrees from 90. So 90 minus 29, so that will be 61 or 61 degrees. And that will be the measure of our angle B. And if you can see, kompleto na ang dimensions, ang mga sides at angles ng ating right triangle. So therefore, the right triangle is already solved. So, ang application ng right triangle trigonometry is solving problems involving angle of elevation and angle of depression. Like for example, in this problem, the angle of elevation from a point A to the top of the building is 49 degrees. If point A is 50 meters away from the top of the building, find the height of the building to the nearest hundreds. So, kung ano man yung principle na ginamit natin kanino are the steps, we will be using it in solving for the angle of elevation and angle of depression. So, yung mga problems related to them. So, of course, kailangan natin ng illustration. So, we have point A and the building. So, ang sabi, the angle of elevation from point A to the top of the building is 49 degrees. So, this one. And then, so, the, the distance from point A to the top of the building is 50 meters. And we are now asked to find the height of the building. So, kailangan natin gawin. And if you can see, we can form here a right triangle. So, we need to take note that the reference angle here is 49 degrees. So, 50 meters and H, anong parte siya ng right triangle with respect to the acute angle 49 degrees? So, H is the opposite side. Yung height ng building, that will be the opposite side. And the 50 meters, that will be the hypotenuse. So the trigonometric ratio that we are going to use in order for us to relate the opposite side and the hypotenuse based on Sokatoa will be the sine ratio. So sine theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Then upon substitution, we now obtain sine 49 degrees is equal to h over 50 meters. Now, you can multiply both sides of the equation by 50 meters to eliminate the fraction. But you can also cross-multiply. So again, sine 49 degrees here has a denominator of 1. So upon cross-multiplication, we will obtain h is equal to 50 meters times sine 49 degrees. So using your scientific calculator, we will obtain the value of h that has an approximate value of 37.73547, etc., etc. Again, it is non-terminating. So the value of h rounded off to the nearest hundreds based on the problem will be 37 and 74 hundreds meters. So therefore, ang height ng ating building is 37.74 meters. So next, let us have the last problem. For this time, we will be given with a problem related to angle of depression. So the angle of depression from the top of a lighthouse to the boat is 50 degrees. If the boat is 200 meters away from the base of the lighthouse, find the height of the lighthouse to the nearest meter. So let us now illustrate the problem. So we have the lighthouse and the boat. So we are given with the angle of depression starting from the top of the lighthouse that measures 50 degrees. And then, uh, we are given also with the length or the distance that is 200 meters away or yung distance from the base of the lighthouse to the boat is 200 meters. So next, we need to find the value or the height of the lighthouse. 
you can actually form a right triangle here above. Pero mas maganda at makakonkretize natin ang problem when we use the alternate interior angle theorem. So take note that this angle is 50 degrees. This horizontal line of sight from the lighthouse and the water are parallel. So therefore, we can form a pair of alternate interior angle. If you can observe, we can form a right triangle here. And we should consider that the reference angle in the given problem is 50 degrees. So with respect to 50 degrees, anong part si 200 meters at anong part si H ng ating right triangle? So H of course is our opposite side and then 200 meters will be the adjacent side. So if we are going to relate these two sides of a right triangle, we will be using the tangent ratio. So tangent theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Then, if we are going to substitute, that would just be tangent 50 degrees since the acute angle given is 50 degrees is equal to H over 200 meters. Then, we cross multiply and we obtain the equation H is equal to 200 meters times tangent 50 degrees. And if we are going to use the scientific calculator, so 200 times tangent 50 degrees, so that would just be equivalent or approximately 238.35 meters and we are asked to find the the height of the lighthouse to the nearest meter so therefore rounding this off we have h is equal to 238 meters so hence we can say that the, the height of the lighthouse is 238 meters so this will be the end of our discussion for today about the right triangle trigonometry or again, solving right triangles using trigonometry. Solving for the sides, the angles of a right triangle using trigonometry. So if you've learned something for today, do not forget to like this video, share this video to others para makatulong tayo sa kanila. And if you are new to our channel, please subscribe. And hit the notification bell for more video lessons. So this is Sir Jude, good day.